Hey everyone, Max here today with Out of Spec Guide. I have a quick video for you about driving range in electric cars and how an electric car will present to you how much range it has left. You know, when you're, let's say, 80% battery and your car says 200 miles, what does that mean? Well, there's two big ways of guessing range that vary among car manufacturers. Some cars, like the one I'm in right now, my Polestar 2, let you select between both. So I'm gonna talk about the most common approaches employed by most manufacturers uh, and the pros and cons of each. So there's two big schools of thought here. There there's rated range, which is based off tests, like in the United States, the EPA test cycle, uh, in Europe, WLTP. You may have seen these numbers in marketing and advertising. It's usually what you see as the kind of figureheaded range of a car. Uh, there are range calculations that are based just off those numbers and the like average consumption expected based off a test procedure. And then there's uh, projected range, which is based off your current driving conditions, the way you're driving. Uh, it usually has some kind of memory or history of the last like 30, 60, whatever, 90 miles you've driven, factoring that into what it's guessing your current range will be. So if you know that doesn't make sense, we'll just keep watching this video. I'll explain both and uh, the pros and cons of both approaches. So let's get into it. You can see here in my Polestar, I have 17% battery, pretty low, and it's guessing I have 40 miles of range. But how is it guessing that? Well, it is doing, at the moment, a standard projection. Uh, it's taking a standard, what they call real-world achievable value, and uh, just multiplying it by the percentage. So in my case, 0.17, because 17% battery, times my car's standard rated range, which is 250 miles. Is They say it's achievable, for me, I've never actually achieved it, so I think it's optimistic. But the usefulness of this is that it's a very consistent metric. It uh, is you know, never gonna change. 17% is always gonna equate to 40 miles with this standard model. Teslas do this, lots of electric cars do this. Uh, well, mainly Teslas, honestly, are the main ones who do this. And uh, it's just useful, again, for the fact that it's consistent. I don't find it's always realistic to driving, though. It is consistent, standard, reliable, not realistic. Well, if you want realistic, in my Polestar, it's so nice you can switch this, I would switch to a projected metric. Projected is a little more complicated. It basically requires the car responding to changes in your conditions. In this case, in the Polestar, it's factoring in your speed, driving style, and climate settings, and giving you an updated number. How quickly that number updates, how sensitive, sensitive it is, varies on each car and the way it's programmed. But I do like seeing on the Polestar Range Assistant app, it's funny, it tells me 40 projected, which is the same as they gave standard, so in this case, I'm matching. But anyhow, um, usually they can vary, and usually I find my projected is lower than the standard because I am usually driving less efficiently than, let's say, an EPA tester might. But anyhow, my driving history here is shown. Lots of cars have some kind of graph like this. Tesla has an energy monitor. Uh, Ford vehicles have an app for this to see range. Hyundai, Kia, Genesis vehicles have an EV app. Every vehicle is a bit different, but you can find usually somewhere in your car software some kind of visualization like this. I find these super useful to look at as a nerd. Uh, let's just decode this just to kind of understand some concepts here with projected range. You can see I have an axis here of the last 40 miles I've driven. And in the last 40 miles I've driven, there's two colors, red, which is uh, orange, which is driving, blue, which is climate. Climate has a much smaller effect. Driving, m very commonly, is by far the largest contributor of consumption. Uh, on the Polestar, I can change the axis from 20, 40 to 100 miles. I find 40 is a pretty useful, um, pretty useful uh, just estimate of how I've been driving, but you can cho choose whatever you want. Anyhow, let's do some illustration here, right? So it has an average, basically trend line here. I'm sitting at 33.6 kilowatt hours average for the last 40 miles. But you can see if I switch it to 100 miles, it has a bit of a higher consumption number, meaning more kilowatt hours that have consumed more battery energy in those 100 miles. Uh, that's just because that I've trended to be more efficient in the last 40 miles than I have in 100 miles. This right here is the issue with projected range. It is always going to change based off, you know, just instantaneous conditions. In the long run, it has an average and it'll stick to that. But we don't live in the world of the long run. We live in the here and now, right? And so uh, I find that it's just less consistent 
and it's obviously based off your driving. If you drive some days in the suburbs, but some days you drive at higher speeds on the highway, those days are gonna you know, be much larger changes on a graph like this. And you're gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, and you'll have to get used to your projected range of times being pessimistic or optimistic. In the EV business, as nerds, we like to call this a guessometer for that reason. It's always guessing, but it's guessing off some kind of you know history of your driving. It can't anticipate the future. It can't anticipate the exact conditions. So as a result, it's not always going to be perfect. Um, and I think that's the big thing to get across here, right? Projected range may be super helpful. I find some vehicles model it very accurately, but use it at your own risk because it won't always be accurate. Um, another thing to get across here, you can see within the projected range, this is common, like the Chevy Bolt, this is always on your driver display, but in my car, it's in the range assistant app, you have a min max. This is like, your projected range is like what it thinks as if it had to give one number, it would be your range, 40 miles here. But if I drove like a bat out of hell, or I had my climate, you know, heating the car really aggressively and the battery, and it had to consume a lot of energy, it could be as low as 23 miles could be even lower to be honest, but this is its like realistic minimum. Then it gives a realistic maximum of 50 miles. So that's good. I'm closer to 50 than 23. So I guess that means that I am generally trending in terms of projected range to be pretty efficient. Um, it says my speed, driving style, and climate are all at low consumption. These are right the biggest contributors to range here that it's considering. Uh, so yeah, minimum, maximum, general projected value, a lot that goes into projected range, but I hope you kind of understand now some of the upsides of it, some of the downsides. Your car may not let you switch between standard or rated range and projected. My Polestar does, which I think is super useful. Volvos also do this, the C40 and the XC40 recharge, uh, and the upcoming EX30 and EX90, I assume will do this as well. I find it really useful. Teslas, like I said, always do a standard calculation. So you just have to get used to understanding the relationship between how you drive and how many percentage of battery you lose, kind of like a phone. Whereas, you know, other vehicles tend to do more of the guessometer approach and stick with that so it'll always vary with your driving style but hopefully that gives you some intuition into like these two schools of thought of how manufacturers think about guessing your range gives you some kind of uh, idea there I don't know comment below I tend to think the guessometer is more useful more of the time but there are times it can be more confusing than it's actually worth so do you find that like a standard always you know never changing fixed rated achievable range and then taking a percentage of that as we do in a rated range model is better or do you think it's better to do the always guessing always adjusting uh projected model i don't know tell me uh like i told you what i prefer but uh up to you uh hopefully this has been a kind of helpful uh just introduction to how range is guessed in electric cars um, let me know the questions you have though. Again, quick video, hopefully not too long, but I uh, just wanted to introduce those two concepts to you. I've been Max at a spec guide. I'll see you on this channel with more kinds of EV tutorials, concepts, addressing topics like range anxiety, charging anxiety, and much more. See you in the next video. Bye.